Okay, you ready to eat some more product and make some more things? Oh, okay. Can't get any good stuff, huh? Good class. Yeah, very good. Okay, I want to tell you how to, a, a simple way to make a lot of money in Italian ice. Did I get everybody's attention yet? Yeah. How to make a lot of money in Italian ice. Like I said before, um, because of the economy for the last eight years, a lot of people have lost their jobs, and they don't necessarily want to go on welfare. They want to make money for their family. That's, that's the one premise behind my idea. And, and this is all based on my sales of machines, and I just absorb uh, ideas from other people. I don't think I have an original thought. I just absorb it, <laughs> turn it around, and turn it into something profitable for you. Um, the other thing about that uh, is behind my ideas, Italian ice up until uh, I started doing these classes was absolutely secret. Nobody would tell you anything about it. If you said, how do I make Italian ice or where can Luigi. I get that? <laughs> Uncle Luigi. Yes, exactly. <laughs> Everybody would tell you, you can't get into this business. It's, it's, uh, no, and no one would tell you anything about it. They would never breathe the name Emery Thompson, and they wouldn't uh, tell you anything about the ingredients. Well, over 95% of all Italian ice in the United States is made on my machines. And all the, the wholesale ice, which is not terribly good, but people sell. Little Jimmy's. Rosati, uh, Via Veneto, um, the places out on the West Coast. These are all my customers. Um, but if you called any of them and said, I want to make my own ices, muerte, nothing, death. We're not going to tell you anything <laughs> until, until death. Um, so what I decided to do was make these videos and teach people exactly how you do it. Because they'll tell you, you can go into, uh, down to Bay 8th Street in Brooklyn and into a pizza parlor and say, how'd you learn how to make Italian ice? And the guy's going to you know, rattle off in a fake Italian accent, oh, this came from my great-grandfather <coughs> from Genoa, Italy. He brought the recipe over when he emigrated through Ellis Island and yada, yada, yada. His great-grandfather was either my father or my uncle. And there are a bunch of Presbyterians who never left the country, let alone go to Italy. So uh, that's not where they got their recipes. They got it from us. We put all these people into business. And it's a really simple product. It's sugar, water, and flavor. But they kept, the, the, the whole thing is it was so secret that you could never get into the business. I make the videos. Now there's certain sections of Brooklyn I can't go back to because my name is Mud. Uh, <laughs> but we literally, you know, if you ask them, if you ask a Geno's or if you ask a Cafe Puglio or any of these places, where would you learn how to make ices? Oh, the Thompsons taught me. Um, so with that in mind, um, you, are, you have money to buy a $10,000 machine and, and maybe a push cart or maybe you have a little small storefront and you go into the Italian ice business. I guarantee you, if you had a push cart and you're out in a park, 20 people in the next month or two are going to come up to you and say, where did you get that ice? I'd like to do that. Well, uh, if they're not using my machine, if they're buying it wholesale, it came from Little Jimmy's or Via Veneto most likely, uh, in New Jersey and Pennsylvania, respectively. Minimum order is close to $800 because you have to buy a certain number of pallets of the product. You have to ship it down here. And like Jeff, you couldn't own enough uh, Sears chest freezers to put it all in. So you have to go and rent freezer space when your order comes. Meanwhile, the stuff that little Jimmy made in uh, May is what's being sold to you in August. That's how big the volume is and how they're turning it over. So right away, you got 800 bucks for a fairly lousy product. You know, I love them. They use my machines, but it's a lousy product. Uh, it's got lots of chemicals in it, so it'll last four months. It's sticky. It's gummy. When they ship it down from New Jersey, uh, the guy loads up the, the tractor trailer, the, what we call a reefer truck. You know, it's refrigerated. And he's got uh, Little Jimmy's Italian Ices. He's got uh, A&P's uh, uh, green beans, he's got Mario's frozen pizzas, and so he gets down the Jersey Turnpike, he's driving along, he turns off that reefer because it eats diesel fuel like crazy. And while the diesel's off, the temperatures are warming up. So the green beans melt a little bit, big deal. When he turns it back on, they'll refreeze, nobody will know the difference. Meanwhile, your Italian ice, the flavor has bled to the bottom of the can. So when you go to serve it, you know, all the kids are saying, oh, no, I want to get an Italian ice from the bottom of the can. It's really sticky and gooey and lots of flavor in there. That's not good. 
total inconsistency. So it's secret, you can't get it down here, and actually if you take the shipping cost, the, price, the cost of the product, and the storage cost, you're looking at about $75 for a, uh, one of these tubs, right here. 75 bucks is what your net cost is gonna be. Yeah, little Jimmy will say oh, it only costs you 30 bucks, but you got the shipping, you got the minimum order, you got the storage down here, wherever here is. Uh, so it's about 75 bucks for something that costs about $5 to make. Um, I can make a far, far better quality than them if you'll give me $6 instead of five. So we're really not talking a lot of money. So here's what happens in your business. And I came up with this a year ago, January, and I have literally put a thousand people into businesses who are now calling back. I have an ulterior motive. They buy this, I make them filthy rich, and they buy this. What could be better? Uh, I'm an entrepreneur. Um, so what happens is they have their push cart, or they have their little store, or they're wholesaling out of their garage. And Jeff comes along, and this lady comes along, and this gentleman comes along. Hey, where'd you get that ice? Oh, I make it myself. Gee, I wish I could do that. Well, you can't. It costs too much. But I'll tell you what. I'll sell you this tub for $25. And here's the deal. You call me up on Tuesday. You tell me how many of these tubs you want and what flavors you want. Cherry, lemon, mango, grape. Uh, tell me what the order is. You can pick them up Friday after 3 o'clock uh, because that's when it'll be ready. And make sure you bring cash. I don't accept credit cards. I don't take checks. I don't take broken promises. I take cash. And so he comes, she comes, and they buy six of these. And I have it frozen down to zero or ten below in my Sears chest freezers. So it's rock hard. You couldn't scoop it with a hammer and chisel. And that gives them enough time to drive it 20 miles home to, the, to their house. They buy one of these big igloo coolers for 100 bucks at you can put a whole marlin in. So you've got about four or five uh, so tubs in the back of their car. They're taking it home, and now this weekend, they're selling Italian ice out of their push cart, your product. They paid 25 or 30 bucks for it. They're gonna gross 150 out of that. So 150 minus 25 bucks, uh, they're making $125 per tub. They're as happy as can be. And, the, and just by word of mouth, the word will get out. If, if, you, if you don't trust me, then put a small ad in the local paper. We sell Italian ices wholesale, $25 a tub, and see how many calls you get before you even buy a machine. Well, we're not quite ready yet, but we'll be ready in May. Um, so if you've got 20 people, these are 20 push carts that you didn't have to buy. These are 20 people that you're not having to hire Connie to be your... Uh, accountant to run QuickBooks for you. You're not having to pay uh, federal and state t uh, taxes on their income. You're not worrying about Social Security. It's just a straight out sale. And here's where it gets a little better. Um, there, technically, um, Jeff walks up and he buys, and I've got a, a cart, and he buys a lemon ice for me. Dollar fifty. Good. He gets his lemon ice, he walks away. That's a retail sale. Paula walks up to me and she buys four tubs of lemon ice, puts them into her igloo cooler, drives off to Paula's Pizza Parlor, and that's a retail sale. There's no difference uh, in the sale, at least in my mind. Uh, you'll have to check with your state, but I didn't deliver it, so I don't have a truck, I don't have a Department of Transportation logbook of how many hours the trucker drove. He's not in my, he's not in my employ. So when he drops a dasher on his foot, <laughs> I don't have to worry about if he's going to sue me. Uh, it's just a retail sale. You get 20 customers like that. You've got 20 employees all selling your product. I throw a few uh, zingers in there. I say, uh, you know, if you don't come with cash, you're not getting the product. And um, this park here, this is Prospect Park. This is my territory. This is where my push cart is. I don't want to see you in Prospect Park. If I see you at the other corner of Prospect Park, unless I okay it, I'm not selling you ice anymore. So you're controlling the market. You're controlling where the product gets sold. There's plenty of ices, other places he can sell ices except your park. And, and the profit margins are so high that he's making $125 and it's costing him $25. He's bringing home a good income for his family. Now, out of those 20 people, a year from now, one of them's going to say, you know what, I've made so much money, I think I'll call the Semery Thompson and buy a machine. Fine, I put him in the business. Um, but you probably have another 15 people on a waiting list. I can only handle 20, I tell people, I don't know why. Um, but 
you know, someone just moves up off the waiting list, and this guy goes off and, and, and buys an Emory Thompson. And uh, I'm no great shakes, but I'm controlling the market so much that, as an example, if you said you wanted to open up an Italian ice stand in Fruit Loops, Florida, <laughs> I would tell you, fine, we'll help you set up a stand in Fruit Loops, Florida, but you on a good day, we'll only get 50% of all the business in that town because Jeff is already there. He's already controlling the market. You can only hope to get half of his throwaway sales. Why would you want to go there when you could go to Ocala, Florida, you know, a few towns nearby, and be the only guy in town? So, you know, I, I will sell a machine to anyone, but I also more, care more about having successful customers. So I literally tell people, yeah, you can buy a machine from me, but I got this guy... You know, I, I got the, the freeze in South Beach, so why would you want to open in South Beach? Uh, or I've got this person in Palm Beach. Okay, well, you're in West Palm and he's in Palm. There's enough room. Great. Both of you will do fine. Um, but you will be doing the same thing. Uh, if someone wanted to open up with, you know, one of my machines, you can say, hey, listen, um, you know, there's no sense opening up at the other end of, you know, the west side of Prospect Park because all you can do is get half of my business. Why don't you go over to Jerome Park? where you can get all the business. So you, uh, you're, you're buying a machine, you're putting 20 people in the business, you have uh, the income from 20 people on just the one small machine. And it works. I've done this throughout. The, the, the North is saturated with Italian ice. There's no such thing as a pizza parlor that doesn't have one of my machines. I mean, everybody comes in and orders a slice and an ice, uh, as we call it. And it's all my machines. And they're all claiming that uh, the recipe came from their great-great-grandfather. I even had this one guy, I was in my 20s, and this guy, that's how long this has been going on. This guy's sitting around after I put him in the Italian ice business in, down in Brooklyn. And he's sitting around with his buddies. He's having some Cinzano in the morning. You know, 11 o'clock in the morning, they're all sitting around drinking. And he sees me coming, and he goes, oh, Mr. Steve, you've got to come over and try my ice. It's from my great-great-grandfather. And I had taught him last month. And, and I leaned over to him, I said, Vinny, what are you kidding? I'm your great-grandfather. <laughs> and he just smiled, that's right, Steve, good to see you. But th this is the way the business was. But 15 years ago, you couldn't even find out where to buy a squeeze cup. And I tell you where everything is. Um, just on that, you ask, outside of the five boroughs of New York, you ask for a squeeze cup, they're going to look at you like deer in the headlights. We call that a squeeze cup because we eat the ice squeezing it up from the bottom. It's fun, and boy, is that cheap. Um, it's a pleated water cup, like a lady's dress, pleated. It's a, you ask the guy for a pleated water cup. The only place they ever sell them is over there at that water cooler where you pull it down and uh, drink it, but that's, that's an Italian ice cup. I was uh, doing a show in Chicago, and there was, uh, Paul is not listening. I was doing a show in Chicago, and this young lady comes by, and I wanted to talk to her, and uh, she was from Laguna Beach, California, and so we're talking, I'm talking about Italian ice, and I had bowls and spoons like you've had, and I hand her, uh, uh, um, actually, I, I, sorry, I had squeeze cups and spoons. I hand her a squeeze cup and a spoon, and she says, what's the spoon for? I said, so you can eat the Italian ice. She says, I'm from Brooklyn. That's not the way you eat it. <laughs> but, so that's, that's, a, that's a New York thing, and it's a great way to serve the product. Kids love it. And it's a three, three and a half ounce squeeze cup. So if you put four ounces in there, it's falling off the sides. It's huge, huge. Um, so now we're going to make a flavor I've never made before, but I'm told it's very popular. And I like to use these chances because I don't get to make ice cream that often. Um, I'm going to make something I haven't made before, peanut butter and jelly cream ice. Now, someone asked before the difference between Italian ice and cream ice. The difference is a quart of ice cream mix. If I leave out the quart of ice cream mix, and it's, it's an Italian ice. If I add the quart of uh, cream, uh, dairy product, it's, it's a cream ice. That's, that's the only difference. So right there is the only ingredient that makes it a cream ice. It's no big secret. Now you know everything there is to know about cream ices. You can make any flavor you want. I think a lemon cream ice would be horrible. Um, but you could add that to sugar, water, and lemon juice. So. Hmm? Intermezzo. Oh, don't start with the intermezzo again. Lemon. It's the only Italian you know. Lemon cream ice. <laughs> Lemon cream ice. Intermezzo. Okay. If you say so. So, it looks like I Jeff is... Intermezzo. Look at this. He's measured everything out for me. Yeah. Thank you. So, we've got the water. Here's the sugar. 
That seems like a lot of sugar. Is that right? Two pounds? Well, you said yeah. two pounds, 12 ounces. That's it. Okay. And that's the water. Yeah. Look at that. That's not very hard. And well, when you have me here doing the prep Oh, doing all the work. I'm telling you, it's great. I'm sorry, what? Yeah, I do. What handy? Oh, the, the formula. Rep. Here we go. And all these formulas are at my website. Ken, who's watching now from uh, um, Texas. Should we serve in this he's, today? Let him have a real experience? Yeah, let's do that. Yeah. Um, he's putting these up at the website as we speak. Right, Jack? That's what Ken's doing? Yes, sir. We hope. Now, when you're going to make anything with peanut butter, make it the last flavor of the day because it just gums everything up something awful. It is such a sticky mess, as you can imagine, that you don't want to be making this first thing because you'll be all afternoon cleaning your machine. So I'm going to make it on the... No, I'm making it on the big machine. Are you? I guess so I'm, I get to handle your mess. Uh, no, I'll do it. Sort of. Okay, we got the sugar. We got the water. Let's pour that in. Um, make sure the gate's closed. It's drained out. Oh, I just cleaned that for you. It's nice oh, and clean. Thank now. you, sir. Hold it. Hold it. Bring it back. Bring it back. Put it down. What did I forget? Well, wouldn't it be, since you're dealing with peanut butter, wouldn't it be easier to mix everything in here than try to get this in the hopper? Okay. Uh, I'm just asking. No, you. no. Sounds good. I can even lend you my... Uh, mixer. Wow, I hadn't thought of that. Well, but it's that's a great idea. I know. I try to put peanut butter in the hopper of the machine, and that's a mess. Yeah. Now you're talking a mess. Now, in the old days, you might hear people say that when they make something with peanut butter, they use Jif. They're not using it because Jif is better. Jif is so watery that uh, it's easier to work right. with. It's not a great product. No. Uh, the Smuckers here is is terrific. Or Skippy Super Chunk is what I use. Okay. Skippy Super Chunk. Here. Does that work? Yeah. All right, I'll let you go to it. I can't wait to use that mixer. <laughs> Are you going to use it? Clear no, the room no, out. No, I'm going to let you use no, it. No, you can do it. Ah, I'm afraid to. No, that's good. You can do it. Excuse me, Steve. Yes. Do I need to call Andy now for cleanup? <laughs> yeah, it may take until we close today. That's for sure. Oh, yeah. This looks yeah. like good peanut butter, actually. Yeah. Oh, this is what I eat. You could so use a high-quality spoon, though. Yeah, I know. Paula bought these. They look pretty. Oh, then they're great. <laughs> <laughs> happy wife, happy life. Yes, right? that's true. Okay. And Any? one other thing you could do, if you owned a gourmet um, Italian ice store, well, you're making a cream ice, right? Yeah. Now, what my friend would do, Evan, in South Florida, with this flavor, mm -hmm. he would make his peanut butter cream ice and swirl in the... Beer. Yes. Yeah, that is another way to do it, is to swirl this in. Uh, this is a Stogo recipe, so I wanted to see... I've done it. I've seen it with the swirl in, so I wanted to see how that comes in. Okay, and I'm swirling next one anyway, so... Let's okay. Jeff has a great method for swirling. That's so simple. No, yeah. you know, you wonder why. <laughs> Anybody can do it, you know. Did you take pain meds during lunch? <laughs> I knew your foot was hurting you. I love peanut butter. Everybody like peanut butter? Yeah. How many people have nut allergies here? See? It's all phony. No, it isn't. I knew we'd get into this. Hey, I, I had to pay for that poster of Mr. Peanut choking. It better not be phony. <laughs> Isn't that awful? It's, it's a picture of it. My IT man out in uh, Texas made it for me. No, but this idea of selling to other people and, and nothing more than just putting out a simple ad and word of mouth. Oh, please. You need this? Yeah. I'm just here for show. Why don't you do this now? Try it. Try it out. It's kind of right. cool. Okay. Just give it a shot. A little Nutella ain't going to hurt. No, it didn't. Oh, you put chocolate in. Uh, oh, you said Nutella's not chocolate. Right. That's pretty cool, isn't it? It is. 
And if you give it a minute, be patient, it'll really make it smooth. Mm. It's a great thing. I don't take credit for it. My it's a, it's a lot Kevin better. invented it. It's a lot better than gumming up the machine. Or whisking. Uh-oh. Oh. Don't break my grill. I'll try not. Who's an Amazon Prime member? Me. Who's, wait, wait, who's not? Oh, do, you got to join. Do it today. Yeah. When you go home, $99, be an Amazon Prime member. I shop for a, a tremendous quantity of stuff, and Amazon Prime is one-stop shopping, next day delivery, no shipping charge. Yeah. How can you beat that? Especially when your printer goes bad, and it's 40 pounds, and they're shipping it for free, uh, second day or next day. Or dog food. Ready? Uh, yeah. Ready? Take it away. Okay. Popper closed. All right. We'll see what happens. This is going to be good, you know. The millennials are not going to like you using your finger. <laughs> they didn't see. Okay. <laughs> All you millennials there you watching. There you go. Look at that. Yeah. Oh, that's a beautiful thing. Oh, Hold and on. that made it so Hold easy. On. There's nothing left. Oh, you're right. Look at that. Huh. That was easy. That was great. All right. I think we ought to start selling Black & Decker <laughs> drill bits. <laughs> How much? Uh, you can get 25 bucks for those. Oh, no no problem. Okay. Uh, again, oh, we can go to Italian Ice right there. Start. Refrigeration. Sometimes people ask me, uh, how long should I pre-chill the machine? You don't pre-chill it, because all you're doing is getting the walls cold and the blades will stick to it. You put your product in, get it spinning, and then you turn on the refrigeration switch. Um, the, another reason I give out my home phone number, and I hate to embarrass people, but not any of you, some of the calls are pretty amazing. A lady called up and she said she could not get the product out of the machine. And I, I spent about 15 minutes, could not understand what the problem was. So I said, send me a video. It's great, with a phone, you just send a video. So she is making the product, let's call it he to hide, her, uh, hide who, who she is. He's making the product, and when it's ready, he turns off the refrigeration, and then he turns off the infinite overrun control. And he's wondering why it won't come out of the machine, because there's nothing spinning. Did you put vanilla in? I'm sorry. No. Okay. You go. Oh, you don't want vanilla? No, vanilla's fine. It says it in your thing. How much? An ounce. Okay. Give him a good ounce. Yeah. Oh, I use so much more vanilla than I used to. Thanks to you. Um, uh, vanilla, grape jelly, ice cream mix, water, sugar, yeah. peanut butter. We're good. We got it all. When when you're making ice cream, I I told him it's a great tip. I count the ingredients because you know, you're gonna be working two ahead, three ahead on your flavors. So just count the ingredients, and then when you line everything up, it's easy. One, two, three, four, five, six, and then you know you're done. You don't have to worry about it. That, that is smart. You have no idea how smart that is until you start doing it. Uh, I do a lot of shooting, and uh, the first, one of the things they teach you is to count your bullets so you know that what's left in the gun. And now I can't watch a TV show anymore because I'm watching, you know, the guys shoot. 30, a little, little pistol, 37, 38, come on. You know, it would have a mag this, this big. 42 out of the same gun. <laughs> but if you do, that's great. Count your ingredients. Is, uh, I'm going to start doing that. <coughs> Maybe I'll stop forgetting to put things in. I, I always forget because I'm working two flavors ahead. Yeah. Um, Another subject about ices. A little touchy, but very important for you to understand. Um, if four people walked into my office and I had to guess what's your favorite flavor of ice cream, I cannot do it. I have no idea. Um, it sure would be nice <coughs> if I could do it, because then I would know, depending on the fair that I'm doing, the festival I'm doing, even the location of my store, what are going to be the prime flavors. Excuse me. <coughs> um, Ices are different. Ices are extremely ethnic. Uh, those same four people walk in. If this one is uh, Italian, favorite flavor is going to be lemon. If this person's black, it's going to be cherry, grape, or watermelon. 
If this person is Hispanic, it's going to be one of the coconut flavors. And, and if it's me, uh, Presbyte white Presbyterian, I need a committee to make a decision for me. We, <laughs> Presbyterians can't make decisions. But what it means is when you're doing the Feast of San Gennaro, which, uh, and oh, and chocolate. Chocolate is usually in a, a Jewish flavor, though I absolutely love it. Um, if you're doing the Feast of San Gennaro down in Little Italy, don't bring chocolate ice. It's not going to sell. If you're doing um, the Hispanic Day, the Puerto Rican Day Parade up Fifth Avenue, make sure you have coconut, pina colada, uh, and, and flavors like that. If you're up in Harlem, have the cherry, lemon, grape. It doesn't mean the other flavors won't sell. It just means that two or three to one, you're going to sell more lemon ice in an Italian neighborhood than you are chocolate ice. So when you go out to do a festival, all you have to do is look at the demographics, and you're going to have a very good idea of what's going to sell. I mean, every food person, every restaurant wishes they could do that when they first start up, that they, they could know what will be the favorite flavors. Uh, in ice cream, it used to be, you know, traditionally for a billion years, vanilla, chocolate, strawberry. Now the number two flavor is salted caramel. Uh, it's, it's vanilla, salted caramel, chocolate, and then strawberry are your, your primary flavors. Uh, that, that's a big change, big sea Interesting change. Interesting story about salted caramel. I put salt, I made salted caramel, put it on the menu, and uh, the older people, salt in the ice cream? No, salt, and that's what I got, salt. So I, I did what you're supposed to do. You leave the ice cream alone, change the name. <laughs> so yeah. I called it vanilla caramel praline. Now I get what's a praline. <laughs> <laughs> I but have... it works. Now it's our biggest seller, vanilla caramel praline. It's salted caramel. I heard that when you heard about salted caramel, you put some ice cream mix into a cup, you put this yeah. licked and put the salt down <laughs> and the caramel, and you went. <laughs> <laughs> no? <laughs> Close. Close. <laughs> what else can I tell you about Italian ice? Um, push carts. Um, if you were doing a push cart, which is an inexpensive way to get going, uh, you might buy a commercial one. Uh, it's going to depend on the health department. Uh, some of the health departments are really tight, and they want you to have a push cart with uh, a dip well. That's where you, you know, you've seen them in stores where you uh, put uh, running water and you put the, the spoons in. Uh, you can actually get, I think the company's called Magnolia Carts, and they actually have a, a dip well system that can be on, on a cart. Um, if you're going to stationary locations where there's electric, great, you can plug it in. Uh, C. Nelson, uh, the dipping cabinet people, have uh, carts like that. Uh, they also make a cart that looks like my um, serving cabinet that you saw before, but it's double walled. Um, there's the outer wall and the inner wall, and in between it is salt water or something similar that freezes below uh, 32 degrees, way below 32 degrees. So you plug it in tonight, the whole box gets super cold, you unplug it, and now you're good for five or six hours. If you're on the cheap, um, which everybody should be starting off, I found this thing. Um, I'm using it as my uh, ice dispenser today. But this is, this is like a, a giant version of blue ice, like you would put into a child's, um, into a, a child's lunch pail, you know, where you freeze the blue ice and that keeps the sandwich cold all day. Um, this is filled with glycol or some similar product, and, you, and it's, it's outer wall and inner wall. And you take this and put it in your freezer tonight and freeze it down solid, and then um, all day long you can have you, you take, if you had two or three of those in a push cart, you just drop your tub down into this, and that's going to keep the ice for about four or six hours. So the old way used to be dry ice, but dry ice is not easy to find. It can be expensive. Uh, so this is a nice uh, solution. I don't make them. I don't sell them. It's made by a company called um, Carlisle, uh, as in Carlisle, Pennsylvania, which is a hard town to spell. <coughs> I think it's C-A-R-S. I-L-E, but I could be wrong. Carlisle. C-A-R-L-I-S-L-E. C-A-R-L-I-S-L-E. -L -L -E. -E. Oh, now it's easy. Yeah. <laughs> That's why he was a teacher. So um, they make this and they sell it through places like, is it Restaurant Depot that you use? Yeah. That's a great source, restaurantdepot.com. 
terrific source for finding all sorts of stuff. So this works very nicely for keeping your Italian ice. That uh, ice is still, that's pretty good, it's all day. Yeah, all day and it's keeping no cover. my... I, I, I think it's called an ice, it's just called an ice cream server. And it comes in black or white. They sell a lid for it, don't buy the lid because the lid is domed. So once you put a dome lid on, you can't put another tub on it. But if I had two of these with this broad rim, I could stack two, one on top of the other. So I could have you know one here and one on top. And these are about, I think they're about $85 when you buy them. Oops. And uh, so if you had four or six of those, pretty darn good. Yes? Refrigerated, uh, refrigerated, number one choice. But they're heavy. Yeah, and you're you're dependent upon the cord. Of course, wow. uh, but I it. think with these and the plates, you're good. I think you'd be very good with the Nelson cabinet that you plug in and freeze, oh. and and in addition to this. Yeah. See, it's freezing at home. You're plugging it in your garage yeah, tonight, what about, and then I, you're taking it out. Were you asking about not using that just plates and this? I don't think the non-refrigerator is going to work in South Florida. It gets just too damn hot. Yeah. But I mean, you can, at fairs and festivals, rent electric. You know, you can have a plug-in. I wasn't sure if you have access to all those. Oh, ones. yeah, you rent that. Cost you yeah. more, sure. The, the perimeter people buy that. Because uh, I have a guy I put in business who does carts, and he has just the plates, just those cold plates. Freeze them in your freezer, put them in, put your ice cream in. He doesn't even have these. Okay, this is ready. So I'm gonna turn off the refrigeration. But just it's Florida, South Florida? Eek, I live there. It's it's like rainforest. Yeah. Except okay, in refrigeration's India, off. Watch this. Which makes it look like a spring. That's day. how fast it comes out. I think it would be prettier Boy, if that's, you uh, that's cream ice. Yeah. Wow. I think it would be prettier if you swirled in the um, Peanut butter, I mean the uh, jelly, but we'll see. Now that costs next to nothing compared to a peanut butter and jelly ice cream. That's really uh, beautiful. It is nice. <laughs> Every time I make something that works, Jeff is just astounded. Well, I'm, I'm happy, I'm proud. <laughs> I'm proud because so many of the ideas have been joint efforts. Yeah. You didn't help me with Sharknado over there. No. Sharknado. Or didn't. how about that uh, avocado? What was it? Oh, the yeah. avocado. That was Paula. That one, not me. Boy, this, this smells good. You know what? Let's make sure that we're going to give it to them. No, we're not giving it to them. We're keeping it. I got to tell you, that's outstanding. It is good. We're keeping it. That's outstanding. So the next thing we're going to make is. <laughs> <laughs> now you're going to learn to get it in. Here. You're going to like that. You shove it down, or you uh... like this. Oh, okay. You're so, going to eat on, it in these terrific, uh, authentic water cups. Boy, that's good. Did you taste it? I did. That's it is good. Standing. I got a good idea. This is pretty fast. See, I'm just sliding it in. I spent a lot of time in pastry shops. This is uh, very good. One more. One more. What, he can't come up here? Yeah, he's amazing. Okay. And with your blending at first, I don't have all the mess in the machine. So I can I get love. right to it. I love that. Here you go. Oh, come on. Forget, put that spoon down. Spoon? Live. Spoon? Oh, did you hear that? Don't say that. He won't what? come back. What? She said this was the best one yet. <laughs> please, don't, please don't say that. I need Jeff. Uh, they're, they're just saying that. I know they are. They're just trying to help me out. So I don't feel bad. 
hey, I don't care. As long as they get to know this, get into business, make some money, yeah, that's all that counts. Now, did you mention something about doing the jelly? The it's a, sort of thing? I'm yeah. going to show you on the next product how to do that. Holy, Holy crap, it's good. Huh? Okay. Anybody? I'm going to take some. Money, right? That tastes like money. Yeah. Hmm? No. No, I'm just going to use the 12 quart. It's, it's the good, same process. It? Everything you see, it's, it's all the same. It's just different sizes. It's just different sizes. Yeah, what does it say? Two 12 ounce jars? 24 ounce. No. This was made so fast I didn't even notice it. All right. Good. Well, I hate to make something else now. This is so good. Instead of 24, we used uh, 32. Okay, I hit a home run two on this one. Two 16 ounce jars instead of two 24. This is peanut butter and jelly. Uh -huh. This is, this is the This is good. That's good. Hey. Peanut butter. Yeah, man, come on. Come on, have some more. It's good. And easy... Easy as pie. You got it. Boy, they're coming back for seconds. You learn something every day. I just looked out in the parking lot, and there's this beautiful Corvette oh, stop. that says X Hippie on it. Wow, I guess the ice cream business is good. Right next to the black Lexus. <laughs> yeah. Oh, there you go. There you go. You're right. Soon to be a Jaguar. Outstanding. I have good. Wow. I'm thinking of making peanut butter and jelly ice cream now. It's so good. This tastes like ice cream. Jelly? Two. Thirty-six ounces. Two 18-ounce jars. But I got to tell you, you can't add too much. It's No, you can't. It's, it's good stuff. That was... That goes down as one of the best things Someone package that? coming out of here. That's delicious. You know what makes it so good? The crunchy peanut butter. I'll get the crunchy peanut butter. Yeah. The crunchy peanut butter. Look, 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 look. Steve, Steve. Thirty-two. Two pounds, 12 ounces sugar, and three quarts of water. Well, we, we, there were just two 16-ounce jars instead. It's, that's good. The crunchy peanut butter makes this thing. What's that foreign substance on the towel under the uh, dripper there? What is that? I, I think that's dessert. <laughs> Huh? Yeah. Outstanding. Did you give some to the girls? Yes, I did. Okay. Oh, boy. There's still more in here. Oh, okay. Oh, I'll, I'll work on that. Use, oh. well, I'll tell you what. Get a, get a bucket. Here, get that. Yeah. And let's just start her up, get the rest out. Why did you put it in water? A little bit, oh, just okay. a little bit. But we got a lot of this stuff coming out, it looks like. See, it's, here I, it comes. I pulled here. it on the stiff side. That's right. Just easier to rinse the machine the more of this stuff you get out. Yeah. Should I show you a little trick? Yes. See, it's going right now? Yeah. Look, just a little bit of water while it's going. Okay. Oh, yeah, great oh, trick. Come out. Yeah. I like that. Yeah, we should be able to do it. 
Yes. Yes, it would. What's that? If, if you just get rid of the water and just make it all ice cream That's mix. what I say to him in the break. I said, that was so good, I think I'm going to try making it as ice cream. Now, here's a tip worth hundreds and hundreds of dollars. Go out and buy a cheap spaghetti screen, uh, screener because now this has little chips in it uh, from the peanut butter that was left in there. It might also have chocolate chips if it was chocolate chips or maybe some raisins. And you keep doing that, and one day your drain is going to be clogged up solid. So you pour all your wastewater through here. And if you're really frugal, you could uh, save those raisins or chips and use them on the next batch. I mean, it's all, hey, it's only water. I take that and yeah. pour it in the tub. Yeah, well, they just went ooh. And I say, oh, it's no. not an ooh. Chocolate chips, coconut, cherries, yeah. nuts. Absolutely. Ah. You said ooh, but um, I was just watching a movie um, and they were explaining economic terms using a chef. And the chef was talking about, well, when we have fresh fish of the day, we use fresh fish and we sell it. And the second day and the third day we sell it. Mm -hmm. After that, the fish is still good, right? but Kill we me. don't sell it as fresh fish. We put it into a stew. And I'm thinking, I love bouillabaisse. And now I'm finding out it's all old uh, fish. <laughs> I mean, the, why buy <laughs> The Big Short. Yeah. Oh, if you haven't seen The Big Short, you've got to watch that movie. Yeah. First time to kind of get the gist. Second time to understand yeah. what they're saying. Yeah. The Big Short. Oh, it's a great movie. Yeah, now you just made it sound boring because you said it's about the housing market. But when you have a when you have a beautiful lady sitting in a bubble bath with a glass of champagne explaining economic terms to you, uh, it, it makes perfect sense. But also, it makes you think. Okay, like you said with your fish thing. Now you know what the specials of the evening are because it's the fish that's the last leftover. Leftover. It's getting toward its end of its life, so to speak. Yeah. Oh, horrible. Are those Are those what? Oh, no. No. <laughs> Steve, everything's for sale. <laughs> everything's for sale. 